Put on IG. I don't own the right to this music. What's up? What's up? Way to make a miracle work of promise. Keep on light in the darkness. What's up, Suzette? That is who you are. Way to make a miracle work. Promise. Keep on light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. It's our victory day. It's our victory day. It's our victory day. What's up? Come on in. Come on in. See my seniors. Look at my seniors. See them over there? Yeah. Yep. Hey, everybody. Come on in. Lunch. Midday manner. Midday manner. Midday manner. Midday manner. Midday manner. God bless you. God bless you. Midday manner. Oh. Way make a miracle work a promise keeper. All right, everybody, it's a victory day. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Put it in the chat. Put it on Facebook. Put it on IG. It's a victory day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for what we call Midday Manor. Midday Manor. Thanks so very much for joining us for Midday Manor. Good to see all my seniors hanging out there. I see you guys. All right. And then good to see all of you who are in Facebook land. All right. The Facebook land. God bless you. And those of you who are on the IG, I think I got every platform going. And, and I'm even on TikTok. Did I tell you guys I'm on TikTok? All right. I'm on TikTok. All right. I've got two names on TikTok. Of course, I am Dr. Jazz is my name on TikTok. And also, I am Dr. Jazz on uh, uh, uh TikTok is I am Dr. Jazz and also finally me for real. So either one of those, you guys can make sure you follow me, check me out. I got some major dance move out there on TikTok. So y'all gonna have to keep up with me and try to see uh, what y'all can do with me. Hey, just a couple of announcements, brief announcement. My singles conference is coming up. All the singles put an S on your chest. All the singles put an S on the chest. If you're single again, give me an S A. All right. So if you're single, give me an S. If you're single again, give me an S A. If you're single with kids, give me an S A K. <laughs> All right, give me a S if you're single. Give me a S A if you're single again because of either a debt or a divorce, a debt or a divorce. All right, give me a S if you're single. That means you've never been married. Give me a S A if you're single again. That means you've been through a divorce or you experience a debt. Or if you have single with kids, give me a S. Uh, single S W K singles with kid. All right, single. You you got a pastor. What? Well, and then I got this last one. I figured this last one for the rest of y'all. And this one. Okay, so the S is if you're single. The S C is if you're single again. The S W K is you're single with kid. Or you can give me this one, mad, but it feels like you're single. <laughs> How you like that one? You're mad, but it feels like you're single. <laughs> I thought I would throw that in because some of you are mad folks out there say, Pastor Jazz, I've been mad, but it feels like I'm single. If you're okay, so you got to give me that. That's called the SWM. You're single with marriage. <laughs> 
I don't know how you do it. But hey, thanks everybody for joining us for Midday Manor. Let us know in the chat where you guys are checking in from on IG, Facebook. Let us Roland, what's up? Roland, are you still are you still managing Anita Wilson? Are you still managing Anita Wilson? Because I need Anita Wilson to come to my conference. Anyway, my singles conference is coming up. I've got room for 10 more of y'all, so you better jump in or you're gonna be it's gonna be shutting down. All right, my singles conference. Okay, it's called Home Alone. Me, myself, and I, my single conference. It's coming up, and I've got this good friend of mine, Pastor YPJ, is gonna be with me. Let me show you. There he is. Pastor YPJ is going to be a part of my singles conference with me. And I'm looking forward uh to uh this weekend. And it's August the 21st, 20th and 21st, I believe it is. And so I'm excited. For those of you, you can still register for my singles conference. And we're going to be having some great conversation. One of the conversations we're going to be having at the singles conference is so important. I'm working on it. And that is my living will. My living will. Right? My living will. That's something we, uh, as single people, you know, are living will. And so my uncle passed a couple of uh, couple of days ago. My uncle passed last week. We had the funeral actually last week, and uh, his wife now is in reduced. Uh, uh, she's on a ventilator. Uh, they were married for sixty years, um, and um, and uh, now she's she's battling for her life. And they have her only child. And uh, and uh, I was talking to her yesterday and saying, uh, Do you have? power of attorney do you have all that stuff and uh, right now they're scrambling to make that happen and that's why it's so important for us um and you know for those for those of us who live single who live by ourselves you know if something were to happen to us who do you know who who knows how to get in our house <laughs> you know what i mean who knows how to get in our house and i'm sending it around this whole theme of uh facebook or ig hold on i'm gonna move you on um yeah i'm centering i'm centering this thing around this whole theme i'm centering it around this whole theme uh this uh thing about uh come before winter come before winter i'm trying to you know there's some things we just have to do before winter everybody put that in the chat put it on the facebook or wherever come before winter and if i were you i would ask myself the question because everybody know winter is coming right everybody know winter is coming yeah, I'm moving y'all because I got to get a better view of you guys. I'm trying to look at six people at the same time. So uh, that's a perfect view idea. So uh, come before winter. We know winter is coming. Winter is coming. And, um, um, you know, winter represents so many things. I don't have time to go into it. Winter represents a certain age. Winter represents a certain age. Winter represents a certain stage. It represents a certain age and it represents a certain stage in your life. You know what I'm saying? And and what you, we know winter is coming. We know winter is coming. We know 60s are coming. 70s are coming. And the reality of the matter is we know that um, that uh, death is coming eventually. Not anytime soon, but it is coming. Nobody likes to think about it, but it is coming. And how do we... Um, how do we we make sure we prepare for it you know prepare for it so um I, i'm excited about going on this journey with you with you guys so register for my singles conference on i am dr jazz i am dr jazz register for my single conference and then lastly this friday is of course my finally me for real on friday and we're going to be talking about uh joe biden's vice president okay let's you we're going to be talking about joe biden vice president you know we're gonna be talking about two groups of people now my senior is gonna be there when i'm talking about joe biden the rest of y'all gonna be there when i'm talking about cardi b new song <laughs> because they don't know what i'm talking about but i'm gonna be talking about cardi b's new song um cardi b's new song i'm gonna talk about cardi b and the vice president all right all right well hello stranger that looks like angie lewis mother on the fire fire uh fire starter good to see you good to see you 
I'll talk to you after. All right. All right. But let's get into our, let's get into our Bible study. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for meeting us in this place. Be glorified our midst. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For indeed you are walking our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. All right. Hey, we are in First Peter. We are in First Peter. Get to see Mr. Gladstone. We are in First Peter. We're chucking away through verse first peter and the whole series of this sermon is hope in hurtful time or hope in helpful time all right hope in hurtful time and hope in helpful time that's what we want to focus on okay hold on mm. even though i can't see your work and all right all right so we focus in on this whole thing of hope in hurtful times hope in hurtful times give it back to me if you're able to give it back to me hope in hurtful times and we are in first peter chapter three and this is our sabbatical month so we've slowed down a lot of stuff we've slowed down a lot of stuff i'm getting ready to get in an rv and go up into some kind of mountains or something for a couple of days a couple of days but on tomorrow i am in south africa virtually of course i'm speaking south africa i'm coming to you tomorrow all right i'm coming to south africa tomorrow and then next week hey ghana wait ghana ghana where are you guys i'm coming to ghana next week i'll be in uh, ghana next week tomorrow i'll be in south africa next week i'm gonna be in ghana i'm just going around the world virtually without leaving my dog on house. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Now to each its own. If you feel like leaving, go ahead and rock yourself out. But as for me, thank God for technology. I'm going everywhere. So I'm looking forward to coming to Australia. I'm looking forward to preaching in India or virtually until 2025. See what I say, 2025. And the way things looking, at least till 2020, 2030. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are in First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. We're going through First Peter chapter 3. And last time we were together, we were talking about the give and take of our, of our relationship. The give and take. That's our key word. The give and take of relationship. In First Peter chapter 3, First Peter chapter 3, give and take. All right, you got to have some give and take. All right, somebody got to do some giving and some people got to do some taking. And sometimes you're the giver and sometimes you're the taker. But in order for a relationship to succeed, whether it's a platonic, whether whatever relationship, there has to be somewhat some give and take. Somebody can be all the giver and somebody can be all the taker. So which one are you? Are you more a giver or you more of a taker? Put it in the chat. Go ahead, put it in the chat. Put it in there. Let's see. Are you more of a giver or are you more of a taker? Go ahead and put it in there. All right, let me diagnose y'all. Okay, are you more a giver or are you more a taker? Let me know. Let me know which one are you. Are you more a giver or are you more a taker? All right, do you give more or do you take more? All right, which one are you? All right, I see you guys giving it to me. All right, my seniors, I know them. They're all givers. All right. They all give us, all right? And the Bible said, give and it shall be given unto you, what? Press down and shaking together and running over. And while it is wonderful to be a giver, here's one of the things I learned. If you are all a giver and never a receiver, you've got a God complex. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't mean to drop it that early in the Bible study, all right? If you are all a giver, 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 but you're never a receiver. You won't let nobody do for you. Oh, who am I talking to? You won't let nobody, all right, cook for you. You won't no, let nobody uh, help you out. That's because you're trying to be what God is, all right? God, okay, God. But on the other hand, if you think about it, Ms. Joanne, even God is a receiver, right? God is a giver and he's also a receiver. What are some things we can give God? Put it in the chat. What are some things we can give God? Oh my goodness this is so good already what are some things that we can give god because the bible tells us all right we know john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he what that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and by the way hey everybody i'm also on youtube so you can check me out on facebook right now and on youtube 
tag, text, and tell somebody. All right. So God is not only a giver, but he's also a receiver. And I see some of my seniors put some stuff in there that God received. He received our worship. He received our love. He received our praise. That's right. And he said, if you don't praise me, what are you going to do? He said, if you don't praise me, even the very rocks that you walk on. And he received our gift tangible and intangible. All right. So we have to have balance. So in any relationship, there is season and time when you are the receiver and sometimes you are the giver. I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that says there's a season and a time for everything under the sun. All right. There's a season and a time. And sometimes in certain relationships, you were always the giver. And then it flipped and you became what? And then you became the receiver. And then sometimes you were the receiver and then you became the giver. And I believe life balance off. How many of you know life balances off? Life balances off. That's why you can't judge your life by just 2020. Huh? By just if by 20, oh my goodness, I was talking to somebody and they were all stressed out. And they uh, one of my members had a counseling session with me and, and they felt stuck and they felt like they're not going anywhere. I said, It's COVID 19, you're not supposed to be going nowhere. <laughs> She said, oh, Pastor, feel stuck. I'm not going. No, I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, I said, remember the word rest. Were y'all in church on Sunday, BGC? What is the word rest? The hour is relax, relax. Everybody breathe in, breathe out, relax. Come on, relax. Take a chill pill, get some water, relax. Come on up in here. The Lord has it in control. Hello, somebody. So we relax. And what is the E? The E is exercise. Oh, Miss Joanne and I, we were exercising this morning. Who else? Carletto, you were there, was packed there also. Oh, we were exercising. Oh, my goodness. And this Friday, I'm starting with a workout with Dr. Jazz at 6.30 a.m. Miss Joy, she like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I, I can't do no eight o'clock. That's too late. Eight o'clock is like lunchtime to me. So this Friday, six thirty p.m. is Wake Up with Dr. Jazz workouts. I'm excited about it. We'll be giving more information. All right. So the W, the the E is exercise. The R is rest. The S is get some sleep. Get some sleep. I've been getting some good sleep lately. My goodness. I rolled over the other night. I said, this sleep is good. <laughs> yeah. How many of you know that sleep is a gift from God? How many of y'all know sleep is a gift from God? Who am I talking to? All right. You don't have to be sleep sleepless in Seattle, sleepless in Baltimore, sleepless in Alabama, sleepless in Jamaica. No. The Bible said he gives his beloved sleep. So if you feel in insomnia or you can't sleep at night, you roll out of your bed and get on your knees and say, God, I'm reminding you of your promise. You said that you give your beloved sleep. The other day I can not sleep and I found that Psalm. Somebody find that Psalms for me. I found that Psalms. I roll out the bed and I said, God, you're not a man that you should lie. No, the son of man that you should repent. And you said that you will give your beloved sleep. Hello, somebody. Yeah, he said he will give his beloved sleep. So I reminded God of his promise. That's all I did. And I kept reading that scripture. I read that Psalms 127, Psalms 127 verse 2. It says, in vain you rise early. Now, now that doesn't mean you can't rise early. For those of you who like, Pastor, I'm not going to join you at 630. And don't use this scripture on me. <laughs> Okay, in vain you rise early and you stay up late. Who are the late people? Late two o'clock in the morning. Where are y'all? Yeah, I can see you. Oh my goodness. Okay, I can see them. All right, I'm in bed at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is it for me? I can't do nothing after eight. In vain you stay you rise early and you stay up late toiling for food to eat. And that scripture in Psalms 127 talks about. The reason why you're up early is because you're worried. 
your worry or the reason why you're staying up late at night is because you have anxiety. Oh, this is going to be so good. This is what he says in Psalms 127. We got a minute. We can go there. Psalms 127 because I feel like I have to break the spirit of insomnia of somebody. Somebody hasn't been sleeping. Who am I talking to? Who is sleepless in Seattle? Put the state. What state are you looking at? What country? I'm sleepless in Alabama. I'm sleepless in Mississippi. I'm sleepless in Georgia, whatever. One of my favorite movies is Sleepless in Seattle. And sometimes we are sleepless because we are restless. Ooh, give it back to me. We are sleepless because we are what? We are restless. We are sleepless because we are what? We are restless. And the psalmist said in Psalms 127 verse number two, he said, it is vain it is it is not worth hey latoya good talking there all right latoya been having insomnia i'm gonna give you 127. he said it's in vain you rise early and you stay up late because you're toiling for food or what you're going to eat all right so sometimes we cannot sleep i see you sleepless in south carolina sleepless in north Carolina, carolina sleepless in maryland i'm reading all of you guys all right give it to me sleep we're sleepless because we are restless because we're worried about some stuff we worried about what he talks about food clothing and shelter we worried about tomorrow we worried about next week we worried and it's hard for you to go to sleep when you're worried all right it's hard for you to go to sleep you got so much stuff on your head you got so much stuff on your mind your mind is just racing you're laying down but your mind all over you know what i'm saying your mind all over you're in the bed but your mind is still at the office <laughs> your mind is still over this and over that and you gotta get it all out of your mind and one of the things that i tend to do is i tend to unload my mind before i go to sleep what do i do i unload my mind before i go to sleep what does that look like i write everything down i write everything down everything that i'm worried about thinking about everything i write it all down i write it all down i gotta get it out of my mind i gotta get it out of my mind so the r is relaxed the e is exercise the s is get some sleep and of course i said if you're mad you can add another thing with the sleep that is sex all right because you're mad the bible talks about marriage is honorable all right the bed on the file so knock yourself out but the t is talk it over the t is talk it over so sometimes when you can't sleep you can talk to god or you can call one of those girlfriends who are up all night you can call <laughs> you can call somebody you got one person who's up all night with you don't call past after eight you know i'm not gonna answer <laughs> uh, uh, but the deacons they will answer miss joy and miss pat go they work the midnight shift they're like paul and silas late in the midnight hour god's gonna turn it around with pat and miss joanne not pastor <laughs> i'm gonna find out like three in the morning Three in the morning is when I realize somebody texts me they in jail, but they've been in jail since midnight. Oh, well, I'll go back to sleep. I can't do nothing at 3 a.m. <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. All, all I'm saying is you got to talk it over with somebody. Well, that's the beauty of relationship. As we get into 1 Peter chapter 3, that's the beauty of relationship. The beauty of relationship, marriage, marriage we know is a gift from God or relationship is a gift from God. Whether it is family relationship, whether it's a marital relationship, whether it's relationship with pastor and congregation, whether it's a relationship I'm having with many of you guys who are on Facebook or on IG, we are in this amazing relationship and there has to be some giving and some taking now last time we were together and we look at first peter chapter 3 we see in first peter chapter 3 that paul peter give these amazing direction to both husband and wives but for some strange reason let's turn to first peter chapter 3 for some strange reason he starts off with the women he starts off with the wives all right with the wives now we already laid the foundation because in first peter chapter 2 he talks about citizens in relationship with the circumstances around them 
He talks about slaves with unslaved, unfair masters in verse 18 in chapter 2. Then he talks about our wives with unfair husband. That's in chapter 3. So when we get to chapter 3, uh, it is Peter talking to the believer whose spouse is unsaved whose spouse is unsaved, all right? So in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, in the same way you wives be submissive to your own husband so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives. So Peter in this particular scripture is talking about your spouse is either unsaved or your spouse is walking in disobedience. All right, y'all got it. Your spouse is either unsaved or your spouse is saved, but walking in disobedience. Y'all catch that? So either your spouse is saved or unsaved rather, or number two, your spouse is a believer, but is walking in disobedience. And how many of you know that the children of God, the people of God, we can sometimes walk in disobedience? Ooh, okay, give me some feedback of some areas we can walk in disobedience. Put it in the chat, put it anyway. What are some areas in our lives that we can, we save, but we walk in in disobedience we walk in in disobedience we walk in contrary we walk in contrary to what god would have us to do what are some what are some areas you know god convicted me of one of them the other day because the bible said that we ought to pray for those who are in places of position and you know it, it's not easy praying for president trump y'all don't want to be honest up in here uh, i was walking in those obedience i had prayed more for obama than trump <laughs> Hello, somebody, you know, and we have the attitude, I ain't praying for that crazy man, but I was walking in disobedience. Hello, somebody. All right. The Bible said the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord to what? To turn it into whatever direction he wants to turn it. So sometimes we walk in disobedience when God tells us to be praying for somebody. Or sometimes the Lord some, lays somebody on your heart. Has the Lord ever done that? He lays somebody on your heart and you know you're supposed to call them, but you don't call them. We're walking in what? In disobedience. What, what about when the Lord asks us to, 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 to give somebody, or bless somebody financially and we would hold it. We walk in in disobedience. Well, what about giving our time? and our offering. We walking in disobedience. What about serving in the kingdom? We walking in disobedience. So Peter talks about that some of us may be married to somebody who is either unsaved or they are saved, but they're walking in disobedience. I don't know which one, Deacon Joanne or Deacon Pat, I don't know which one is more difficult to deal with. But what Peter is saying is sometimes when the wife gets saved, the husband does not. When the wife gets saved, the husband does not. Okay, because oftentimes, Mr. Gladstone, if the wife gets saved, there's no guarantee that the husband is going to get saved or the whole family. But oftentimes, if the husband does, the whole family does. Now, we're going to talk about that later on on a different day. But Peter said, how do you live with an unsaved or a, disappoint, a disobedient spouse? Can I go a little bit larger? Can I go a little? How do you sit? under a pastor who may be walking in disobedience Ooh. oh my 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 how do you how do you how do you remain a good son or daughter deacon elaine when your parents are walking in disobedience ooh, 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 ooh. How, how do you how do you be how do you function as a good citizen of the united states of america or any country where the president that you feel is walking in disobedience. My God, my God. Some of you like, well, well the first thing Peter said is do not start a revolution. <laughs> what did I say? I know some of you, you ready? You ready to pick up arms and you ready to go out there and you want to scale the White House? And no, no, no. All right. Peter said the first thing 
is do not start a revolution. All right. All right. Okay. Now, in this amazing country, you can protest. All right. But there's a difference in protest and starting a revolution. Oh, my goodness. So Peter gives us six. He gives us six ways that we ought to respond. And while these wise a council is the wives. I believe it is broad enough for anybody. In fact, some of you are on jobs and your boss is walking in disobedience. Your boss is crazy. How do, and you want to go off on them. That's why you're having lunch break. Hey, Carla, that's what Jackie, how are you? That's why you're having a lunch break. So number one, I think I talked about it last week is first of all, you have to check your attitude. You got to check your attitude. You got to check your attitude. Okay. The first thing is check in the same way you wives be submissive to your own husband so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be one without a word. Oh my God, my God. So what Peter is teaching you or not, Brother Gladstone, is actions speak louder than words. Put it out there for me. Put it in the chat. Put it. Action speaks louder than word. It reminds me of the young boy, right? The young boy who got in trouble in school and the, uh, the teacher put him in timeout. She said, go over there and sit. And she looked at him and he had this smile on his face. And she said, why are you smiling your time in time out? He said, I'm sitting in my body, but I'm standing in my spirit. <laughs> ah, I love that. All right. You got to check your attitude because how many of you know that actions speak louder than words that sometimes you're not saying anything with your mouth, but you're saying something with your attitude that's why some of you i be seen half of y'all falling asleep on zoom and i say how you feeling oh it's a victory day no you're tired go to sleep <laughs> your action speak louder than your words and so peter said you gotta check your attitude because your attitude determines your altitude ah oh, give it back to me my attitude determines my altitude and chuck swindle says that everything that happens to you in life is just five percent but how you respond is just 95 percent oh give it back to me everything that happened to me it's just 5%. I know some of y'all think it's more than five, but it's just 5%. But how I respond is 95%. And there's a difference between responding and reacting. Ooh, there's a difference between responding and reacting. And believers have to be responsible, but don't have to be reactive. Reaction has to do with my emotion. That's why you know what I tend to do when I see something on Twitter, Facebook that's negative. I tend to take at least 24 hours before I respond. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that war, that emotional war. You know, yesterday after uh, uh, Joe Biden named his VP, everybody's out there and they're commenting and they're posting and stuff like that. I haven't posted anything yet. First of all, I got to read up on her. Because just because you're my color don't mean you're my kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I hope we're not being fooled by that no more. Because we know a whole lot of people who were our color, but were not our kind. And we have a whole lot of people who were our kind, but not our color. And just because you're my same sex also, don't mean you're my kind. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not voting because you're black. I'm not voting because you're a woman. I got to see if you got substance and not just style. You know, everybody got, got, oh yeah, America, you know, cause she, she likes to dance and stuff. Wonderful. But I want to know your policy more than your, more than your personality. Ooh, did I just say something? Did I, please give it, I want to know your policy. And I don't know too much about her. No, I'm excited that it's a woman, but this is not the first woman. 
I think y'all remember Chisholm, Sheila. Oh, come on, put it. Oh, come on now. You know, and, and you know, I'm processing it. And Sheila, the reason why I'm processing it is how come all the time we always got to be VP and can be president? <laughs> okay, I had to get that out. Okay, I had to get that out. Yeah. You know, Hillary was going to run for president, not VP. Why do I got to always just be selling for VP? So I'm processing. My point is, is sometimes you sometimes if you're not careful, you tend to be reactive more than responsive. Th that's one of the thing about um, Black Lives Matter. That's one of the things about every day. There's a different video about some injustice with some African American person. Why? And then what happened? We become ambulance chasers. You know what amber we always chasing a crisis it we are we are chasers more than we have a strategy hmm let me let that sink in a strategy we need a strategy miss alice we need a strategy on how to deal with all of it so we're not ambulance chasers one week we in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Next week we in Atlanta. Next time we in New York. Next time we here, we there, and they got us all running all over, confused. We need a strategy. We need a strategy so we not just running all over the place. So we gotta check our attitude because our attitude determines our altitude. And and Jesus talks about what kind of attitude we should have in Philippians. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. All right. And that is the attitude of humility. All right. What is the attitude? Our attitude of humility. Uh, okay. You have to have humility to do what Peter is saying to do as wise. Wives, be submissive to your own husband. We already talked about that. I don't have to go back there. That means he's your husband, not the whole world husband. That means he's your husband. Wives, submit to your own husband or, or, or husband, submit to your own wives or submitting to one another. Uh, let's go over to Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians, that wonderful scripture that we love to quote in Ephesians because submission is going to require the filling of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. So in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number uh, 16, therefore be careful how you walk, not on wise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Verse 17, so then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is and do not be drunk with wine for that is dispensation, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and be subject or submissive one to another. So in any relationship, there must first of all be mutual submission. What did I say? There must be some mutual submission and submission simply mean letting the person who is a master in that area handle that area. <laughs> it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. I have a great team who set up my IG page. They are great in that. So I yield to their expertise. I'm not trying to do all of this now. I'm pretty good now, but I'm not a master in it. All right, so we yield to the person. So Peter said, the first thing is, I must check my attitude. All right, number two, I must check, my, I must analyze my action, okay? I must examine my actions, okay? I am examine my actions. So he talks about attitude, and now he talks about my actions, all right? He talks about that we should have godly behavior, all right, we should behave in such a way that when the unsaved spouse, the unsaved co-worker, the unsaved person sees my action, they are going to be one without a word. Oh, my God. Oh, do you know you can win somebody to the Lord without saying anything? Oh, my goodness. 
Do you know you can win somebody to the Lord by not saying anything verbally, but you can say something with your action. And Peter said, the power is not in your mouth. Lord Jesus, my God, my God, my God. The power is not in your mouth. Now, you know, um, for most of us, uh, you know, that that's not an easy, oh my goodness. Now, Peter is not saying that you cannot speak up. This is not a dumb wife. This is not a dumb spouse. This is somebody who has meekness and not weakness. Give it back to me. Give it back to me. Ooh, I, I, when I was younger, I didn't know the difference. When I was younger, Sheila, I did not know the difference between meekness and weakness. Uh, when I lived with the shepherds, I thought Miss Shepherd was weak. I tell y'all the story. I thought she was weak because uh, Mr. Shepherd, her husband, had, uh, took some money out of the bank and went and invested and he lost all the money. Ooh, and uh, she, he came home and told her that he lost all the money. And I knew she was going to hit him with a putt over his head. She was going to not cook him no dinner. Oh, I knew it. I knew she was going to hit him over his head with something. And Lord, I can, I eavesdropping and I'm hearing Mr. Shepherd telling Mom Shepherd that Janet, I lost all the money. I lost everything. And I was just waiting. I was, oh, I was like, oh, Mom, gonna give it to him. Please get, oh, give it to him, Mama. Knock him out. Knock him to the floor. Do something. And she, I heard her said something made me cuss twice. I'm sorry. That, I wasn't saved. <laughs> I wasn't that saved. She, she said, well, old Shepherd, Go, go upstairs and, and 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 get ready for for your bath and come on down for dinner. I said, did I hear what I heard? And I wait till he go upstairs and I jack my mama up in a corner. I say, have you lost your cotton picking mind? That's what I said. I said, what did you tell him? I said, did you hear what that man said? He said he lost all that money and you gonna send him upstairs to take a bath. And now you're going to fix dinner for him. Mama, what's wrong with you? I was going off. I was, Mama, what's wrong with you? You need to put him in his place. You need to tell him he, he trifling. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with me in my 30s. I said, you need to put him in his place. You need to tell him he going to get all that money back. And, in, and until he get it back, put him in the basement to sleep. <laughs> I said, Mama, put him in the basement. She said, no, 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 that's not Christ-like. I said, forget Christ. Let's talk about us. <laughs> I told you I wasn't always saved. I just got real, real saved the last 10 years. But oh my goodness. She said, no, Jazz. She said, no, no, no. And my dad came down and I saw my mom serve that man a meal. I saw my mom taking care of Mr. Shepherd. And I'm like, is this for real? I can understand. How can she do that? And then after Mr. Shepherd went to bed, I had to ask her the question. I said, Mama, I, I don't know. You're going to have to explain this to me. And she says, there's a difference between weakness and meekness. And meekness is strength under control. And this was the lesson she told me as I remember. I have a memory of her right now. And I thank God for the greatest lesson they have taught me. And she says, you don't kick nobody when they're already down. My God, my God, my God. You don't knock nobody. She said he's already down. She extended grace. <laughs> I guess that's why my church middle name is Grace. <laughs> she extended grace. Grace. And do you know from that moment on, Miss Alice, my father, Mr. Shepherd, never ever again made another decision, Sister Bass, without talking to Miss Shepherd. She won him over without a word. <laughs> she won him over without a word because many of us don't even understand that sometimes silence is golden <laughs> put it in the chat put it in the chat give it back to me sometimes silence is golden she did say something 
She just didn't say it with a word. That's why the psalmist said, if I can help somebody, don't let me stop. Hmm? As I travel this road, then my living shall not be in vain. And you know, the church used to have a whole lot of mount, but no mission. <laughs> we talked a good game. But after COVID-19, we have less mount and we got more mission. We feeding people twice a week. Huh? Look what, look, look. So it is not a bad year. It's a great year for even some of us. So number one, I got to check my attitude. Number two, I got to analyze my action. Here's number three. I got to watch my adornments. Ooh, I got to watch it. That's First Peter chapter 3, verse 3. He said, and let not your adornment be merely external. Braid in the hair, Lord Jesus. If COVID go for the rest of the year, I need a shaving. Mine's off. I'm braiding it. Hello, somebody. That's why mine's been joined. I love yours. The shorter it is, the easier it is to manage, right? <laughs> Let not your adornment be merely external. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses. Peter is saying the outer adornment in verse 3 forms a contrast with the inner adornment, which we will see in verse 4. All right, so look at verse number 4, 1 Peter. He said, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. Did y'all see that? Oh my goodness. Peter said, he's not saying, first of all, let's make sure Peter is not saying it's okay for you to be homely. He's not saying don't look homely looking. You know, yeah, I got dressed this morning. Nobody's in my house, but you see, I'm fully clothed. I got makeup on and I got shoes on. <laughs> yeah, I may not be going outside. <laughs> But I got shoes on. I got, I'm fully clothed. Okay. All right. Because I've got to look at myself. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I got to look at myself. All right. So even if you're single, at least look good. You never can tell if your house catch on fire and the fireman has to come and rescue you and he's your future husband. I'm ready. Come on in. <laughs> Yesterday, the plumbers had to come to my house. It was two brothers, two BMW, black men that's working. And I was fully dressed. Hello, somebody. I had my cute mask on also. <laughs> All I'm trying to tell you is Peter said, Peter is not saying don't look good. Peter, and some of you, you've let yourself go because of COVID-19, because you're in the house. You've let yourself go. I talked to so many of y'all. You're not working out. You're not taking care of yourself. Hey, you got to take care of yourself. He said, let not your adornment be merely external, but rather let it be what? Internal. Because beauty, it starts from the inside and it comes to the outside. How many of you have ever ran across somebody look good on the outside, but as soon as they open their mouth, oh, their attitude, hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Oh, my goodness. you like, oh, you never know they're a fool until they open their mouth. You never know they're crazy until they say something. So what Peter is saying is you have to find balance. And I want to give a shout out to all you mad folks in the house don't take each other for granted. And every night you got rollers in your hair. You got mismatched pajamas. Come on now. Come on now. We still trying to see if it's worth getting mad. We looking at y'all. <laughs> we, looking, we looking at y'all. So Peter said that external beauty is wonderful, but, but it, internal beauty is eternal. I love Proverbs chapter 31. I got time. Let me go. Oh, I love Proverbs. Go Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Let's go there. Proverbs 31. I call her the five-star woman. Ooh, oh, this ain't no cheap motel woman. This is the five-star, five-star. Miss Pat, she got five stars 
a uh, couple of years ago, I went to the Bahamas. I stayed at the Atlantis. Anybody ever stayed at the Atlantis? The Atlantis that time was a five star hotel. Now they got seven star, they got 10 star. But back then, Mr. Gladstone, the Atlantis was a five star hotel. There's a difference between a motel and a hotel. Y'all know that, all right? Not just the M and the H, but it's the quality of service. Hello, somebody. So in Proverbs 31, there's this five-star woman, an excellent wife who can find, verse number 10, for her word is far above jewelries or rubies, all right? And when you read through Proverbs 31, I'll give it to y'all. Y'all can just thank me for this extra bonus. She gets a star from her husband. Oh, my goodness. All right, her husband trusts in her, all right? She gets a star number two from her children. All right, she gets a star from her house husband. She gets a star. When you read all through Proverbs 31, she gets a star from her children. Number three, she gets a star from the community. Oh, my goodness. All right, I guess I can use all C's. She gets a star from her companion. She gets some stars from her children. Uh, she gets star from her community. All right, she gets star from And then uh, we can use the fourth C for confidence. She gave herself a star. All right, she, oh, I love this thing, man. She give herself a star. Yeah, it, she give herself a star because she perceived that her merchandise or that she is good in what she does. Y'all want me to give it to rewind again. Okay, I see y'all. All right, she gets a star from her husband, her companion. She gets a star from her children. She gets a star from the community because Elaine, she's known in the gate. The people know her. Um, she gets a star from her husband because he's known. He is known all over. I mean, she swag him out. Then the children rises and bless her. The children gives her a star. Then she gives herself a star. All the single people out there, you get a guy on your pat your back. But the greatest star is she got from God. Oh, Jesus. It's right there. It's right there in verse number 30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. My God, my God. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You know, that's where I want to start from God. Anybody want to start from God? I mean, it's one thing to get a star from your friends and a star from your children. I want my church to give me a star. I want Cam and Chloe to give me a star. I want my family members to give me a star. I want my community to give me a star. But at the end of the day, my God, why am I tuning up? At the end of the day, what did I say? At the end of the day, I want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful for servant. You've been faithful over a few things and I'll make you ruler over many. All right, let me move on. You got to check your attitude. You got to check your action. You got to watch your dormant. Uh, but here's the next one. You got to evaluate your attention. Oh, this is good, Elaine. This is good. Y'all got to go to lunch. We got some time. You got to evaluate your attention, Miss Esther. Miss Pat, good to see you. You got to evaluate where you put your attention. It's right in verse number five of First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter five, three, verse number five. First Peter chapter three, verse five. For in this way, in former times, the holy women. Did y'all catch that word? Holy women. Now, I have my seniors on 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 zoom so i can't talk about cardi b until friday <laughs> i got my seniors on zoom y'all pay attention but on friday because cardi b and stallion has a new song out entitled holes in the house don't tell the seniors i'm gonna talk about it on friday <laughs> but i wonder if there's any holy women in the house hey <laughs> I'm going to talk about it on Friday. I got to talk about it because Cardi B has become a greater influence to our teenagers than anybody else. So, you know, we got to talk about this thing. We got to talk about it. But look what Peter says in verse five. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also 
who hoped in God used to adore themselves being submissive to their own husband. Thus, oh my God, Lord, I'm going to have to wrap up right here. Thus, Sarah obeyed Abraham by calling him Lord. <laughs> oh, I've got an assignment for every mad woman out there. You got to call your husband Lord. <laughs> okay, you got to call him king. And he's got to call you queen. Now, you know what amazes me is Beyonce's uh, um, uh, black is king or black is beautiful. I can't think. Give it to me. Somebody going to give me the right definition. Came out a couple of weeks ago. Is it black is king or black is beautiful? Anybody seen it? Black is king. Put it in the chat. And man, um, there was positive review, but it was a whole lot of negative review. And yet, you got Cardi B, who came out now with holes in the house, and it's got more press than Black is King. I'm gonna talk about it on Friday. I'm gonna talk about it on Friday. But Peter says that there's some characteristics about a holy woman. Oh my God. Go ahead and put it. I'm holy. I'm holy. Now let me talk about the word holy. Holy does not mean that you're sinless. Holy simply means you're set apart. <laughs> Are there any single people out there? Pastor Jess, how come you're still single? I'm set apart. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Uh, it's like China. You know China in your in your house? China is not everyday dishes, right, Miss Alice? You don't you don't eat on China every day. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Uh, oh, I have a certain ring. I have a certain ring that I only wear. I only wear on on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a set apart ring. It's a ring that Doc, I'm trying to find it. It's a ring that Dr. Boot gave me, and uh, it's my set apart ring. That when I'm getting ready to preach, I wear that ring. There's certain things that are just set apart but you are chosen generation you're what you are royal priesthood you are peculiar person you've been what you've been set apart all right you, you you've been set apart you've been you've been a set apart you you're distinctive my god my god my god he said for in 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 this way in former times holy women that means they were set apart they were chosen Sarah was chosen for a particular assignment. Elaine, what that lets you and I know is that the promise in Genesis 12 was not just to Abraham, but also to Sarah. <laughs> oh, I got to stop right there. Because so many women make the assumption that God only called their spouse. Just as Bishop Jakes is called, guess what? Serena Jakes is called. Just like Pastor John Jenkins is called. Guess what? Trina Jenkins is called. And it's not his calling is better than her calling. Oh, God. He called all of us, my God, out of darkness. All of us have a calling. Number one, we first call to salvation. Give it back to me. What's your first calling? I'm called to salvation. Give it back to me. Good God, this is good. Jasmine Scholar, you teaching today. I'm called to salvation. Give it back to me. Number two, I'm called into service. Ooh, give it back to me. 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 I'm called into salvation. My first calling is a call to salvation. But my second calling is a call to service. Now, where do I serve is based on my gifting. My sister Antoinette, you're not going to see her this year. I knew Jesus was coming back because my sister is finally on social media. <laughs> She's finally on Facebook. She's on IG. Y'all don't even understand. That is Jesus is coming back. My sister is on social media. But my sister, you will never see her 
doing anything live. <laughs> she has a calling, but based on her gifting, her call, her gifting is she's called to be in the background. But don't get it twisted. She's as anointed as her sister Jazz. See, we don't understand. Some people are called to be on the platform and some people are called to build the platform. <laughs> Paul said somebody water and somebody does this and somebody does this and somebody does this and somebody does this. But what? God is the one who gives the increase. So don't you allow anybody to tell you that just because you don't sing or you don't preach that you don't have a calling. No, 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 no. You have a calling just like you and I, like me. Just like me, you have a calling. All right, so he says, holy women also who hoped in God used to adore themselves being submissive. Look at the second characteristic of holy women. They have hope, hope. Holy women are holy men. They have what? They have hope. Does Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord and you have become her children. Y'all didn't even know. You know how we sang that song, Elaine? Father Abraham has many sons. Well, we should be singing, Sister Sarah has many daughters. How many daughters of Sister Sarah has? And I am one of them. And so are you. <laughs> so let's just praise the Lord. Right hand. Let, huh? She, he says... Does Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord? Now, let's talk about that for a minute. It means she had a high regard for him. Ooh, ooh, she has a high regard for him. You know what amazes me? We got to go back to Ephesians, and then y'all going to go back. Let's go back to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Go to wrong Ephesians chapter 5. Let's go there. I love teaching this thing. This is some good stuff. Ephesians. Anybody getting blessed out there? Let me know. Let me know. In Ephesians, uh, reading particularly at verse number 22, we talked about, before we get to 22, there's 21, submit to one another. And then verse 22, he talks about submission in the content of marriage. And he said, wives be submitted to your own husband as to the what? Okay, you got him as joined as to who? As to the Lord, okay? And then he said, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he being the savior of the body, but as the church is subject. And then verse number 20, verse number 25, husband love your wives. Now that other word for submission is respect. And it amazes me that nowhere in scripture is it ever told for women or wives to love their husband. Nowhere. You know why? Because we can love naturally. Loving is easy for us. <laughs> yeah. We love a straight, we love a crazy dog. We love a straight dog. We, <laughs> we love. But our challenge is respect. Ooh, R E S P C T. Come on, huh? Isn't it amazing? Aretha Franklin asks for respect, but but really the struggle is not. Yeah, of course. Oftentimes we don't get respect, but oftentimes we don't give respect. So a man spells love as R-E-S-P-E-C-T. <laughs> Give it back to me. Spell it out. Yeah. 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 So Paul in Ephesians said, husband, your greatest task is to love. And you have to love her like Christ loved the church. Well, what did Christ do for the church? Ooh, put it in the chat. That's why I keep telling y'all, we got the easier job, women. We don't have to die for them. <laughs> ah! 
Now, what is amazing to me, Sister Pat, is while we don't have to, oftentimes we do. Oftentimes women make the greatest sacrifice Ooh, in the relationship. Brothers, don't come after me. Don't come after me. I'm just talking from my point of view. Oftentimes, women give up. What do we give up? We give up so much stuff. We, we make the sacrifice for his career to go on, for his career to this, and for him to advance. In fact, Mr. Gladstone, I think one of the thing in Wall Street, Wall, Wall, in Washington Post, or one of, it says that more women are making more sacrifice in COVID-19 to stay home with the kids. Now, both of us have a career, both of us making money, but oftentimes she stays home. She downgrades her dream. She downgrades her plan for the sake of the kids. Now, one of the things I've noticed in my neighborhood, Sheila, I don't know if you've seen it, I've seen more men this year walking their kids. Anybody seen that? Y'all see those daddy moms? Man, they'll be in my neighborhood. They're just walking the kids, walking with the kids. It's amazing to me. In Africa, it's the opposite. In Africa, it's the men raising the kids, doing everything with the kids. And in America, it's the women. I went to Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa. The men are out front. The men are in charge. The men are running the stuff. You come to America and it's a challenge. This is pre-slavery, and then there's post-slavery. That's the effect that it has on us. So she calls him Lord. And if we obey, now I've got a close right here. She obeyed Abraham when Abraham was a disobedient husband. Go back to verse one. Because you remember, they're going down to Egypt. What does Abraham do? Sarah, I need to talk to you. When we go down there, they're going to try to kill me to get to you. So I don't want you to tell them that I am your husband. Say I'm your half. Say I'm your brother. She goes along with it. Did y'all hear what I say? She goes along with it. Next week, we're going to talk about when you draw a line. Because <laughs> what if President Trump and them said, the only way you can go back in public is you have to take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, how do, when do you draw a line? When do you say it's best to obey God than man? When do you draw a line in the sand? And brothers, I haven't forgotten you because next week I'm going to talk about three commands that he give to husbands. All of you spouse, tell your husband next week you got to be in Bible study. Don't tell him what it is because they're not going to come. <laughs> Jesse, I want you to be on Bible study with me. He moved now. And he focuses on the husband, which amazes me that he talks to the wife first before he talks to the husband. Doesn't that sound backwards? Shouldn't he be talking to the head before he talk to the neck? Why talk to the neck and then go to the head? It's what Miss Shepherd taught me. I remember telling Miss Shepherd when she gave me that scripture about Mr. Shepherd was the head. I said, head of what? <laughs> she, she said, he the head of the house. And she quoted in the scripture. I'm, and I'm, I got an attitude. I was mad. Yeah, because I was like, headship without leadership is a sinking ship. And I said, mom, how, do you, how, you, how, how can you just be all right with him being the head? And by the way, head means leadership. Headship without leadership is a sinking ship. I'm the head of my church because I'm the leader. I provide vision. 
What does the leader do? The leader provide vision and direction. The person who's providing vision and direction is lead, is the leader. I don't care if you got the title. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm walking Simba, he's the head because he direct me. He don't want to poop in this yard. He want to poop over here. Headship without leadership is a sinking ship. I'm having this conversation with Shepherd. I said, Mom, you got to help me. You got to help me. She said, Jazz, I don't know why you're upset. He may be the head, but I'm the neck. She said, look, do this. She said, you can't move, the, the head can't move without the neck. Boy, when I got that revelation, I didn't mind being a neck. <laughs> I didn't mind being a neck. Hey, listen, I hope you guys are blessed. I'm going to go hang out with my seniors. Let me have a word of prayer with you. Father, we pray for marriages. We pray for relationships because we know that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy marriages and relationships. And we cover them with the blood of Jesus. God, we pray for, for holy women. God, we know that in this day and time, nobody even uses the word holy. But you still call us to be holy. You said, be ye holy for I am holy. So God, help us to check our attitude, help us to check our action, help us to check our adornment, and help us to check our attention. Oh, Father, you said in Colossians, but seek ye the things that are above and not the things beneath. Set our affection on things above. And God, in this year, you've called us to more focus on eternity than time. To focus on eternity more than time. Because this world is passing away. And only what we do for you will last. Father, somebody at the sound of my voice need to get saved today. They're backslidden. They need to come back or they need to belong to a church. And so I want to extend an invitation for those of you who are either on Facebook or on IG. You're not saved. You're backslidden. You don't belong to a church. We would love for you. To make a decision today to trust Jesus. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me of all my righteousness. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. Jesus Christ came, died, buried, and rose again for the forgiveness of my sin. And upon that confession, I'm saved. If you pray that prayer, we want to know about it. All you need to do is put it in the chat, put it on the screen, or just go to our website, victorygracecenter.org, and let us know you did it. But maybe you're saved and you're looking for a church. We are a virtual church in a virtual space. And we would love for you to be a part of our church. Well, Pastor Jazz, I watch you every Sunday. I didn't say watch. Pastor Jazz, oh, I like watching you on IG. And you know, I know. Be connected to our church. Our church. And we would love for you to be a part of our church. Uh, and our service is at 9 o'clock every Sunday. And you can register for church. It's called VLive 120. The information is on the screen, victorygracecenter.org backslash VLive 120. And I love to be your pastor. Not saved. You got saved today. You don't belong to a church, but one, two, the information is right there on either one of those platforms. Oh, you may just need prayers. I'm going to give you a few minutes to put it in the chat where you need prayers for. And our prayer team is on the social media. They'll be taking your prayers to the throne of God. You can put it there. Any prayers, give it to us. We'll pray for you. I see all your prayer requests. Our folks will take care of it. I got you. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. You're welcome. 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 God bless you. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, join us on Sunday. Register for our VLive 120 service, and I'll get to see you actually in person virtually. All right, God bless you all. Have a fantastic day. I'm going to 